Okay. All right, so we're ready. All right, so, um, well, first of all, okay, we have the Jersey Boys in here. Yay! Yay. Okay, um, if you just want to introduce yourselves, that would be awesome. I'm okay. Corey Grant. I play Frankie Valley. Okay. I'm Michael Ingersoll, and I play Nick Massey. Uh -huh. Sean Wiley, and I play Bob Gaudio. This is Brian McElroy. I play Tommy DeVito. Okay, you guys. Okay, this is all I got to say. I was a huge fan of Wicked. I still, I still am. I think it's unbelievable. We got some tickets. We're like, okay, we're going to go see the Jersey Boys. I'm thinking, ah! Oh, I got to bring my grandpa, or like my parents would love this show, right? right. I literally felt I was bring, being dragged to the show, and I would see the commercials, everyone's like, Jersey Boys is the best. I got to tell you, I left there, I have not stopped talking about it. I don't think I've seen a more talented group of guys, in my, or an entire cast in my entire life. And the show is just so incredibly awesome, it is not to be missed. Thank okay, you. so I wanted to start it off with Thank that. It is much. just, I mean, are you blown away by the success? Absolutely. I'm I mean, it, it, we all feel honored, lucky, privileged to play <laughs> rock stars every night of the week, you know, and the audience response every single night is is amazing, standing ovations every single night. And I was going to ask you, is for actors, standing that's standing not the norm, ever? yeah, yeah. Oh, you know? Absolutely. Okay, wait, Corey, i got to ask you, you play Frankie Valli, yeah. the voice and the, okay, how do you get your voice that high? I was waiting for you to come in and literally be three feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> the voice and high. Riffs, <laughs> Did you see Jersey Boys before and think, oh my God, this as an actor, this is my part? No, I actually was much uh, the same way as you, and I did not want to see it, and I don't, you know, I don't need this in my life, this right. cheap box music. Right. Right. Um, and then I got the audition, and, you know, I was not working at the time, so, okay, I'll go see the show before my audition, and I, I sat standing room, and, I thought it rocked, you know, and it's just beautifully directed. The story blew me away. I had no idea what these guys had gone through. And mostly I think what's great about it is that uh, it's a musical for guys. And people yeah. expect it to be fluff because it's, it's not. Yeah, exactly. It's the furthest thing from fluff as you can get. Yeah, Wait, it's hardcore. Tell it's us hardcore what the story is theater. about you guys, Michael. For those of the, I mean, I mean, first of all, you play Frankie Valley, and then you guys, were, obviously, well, it was the Four Seasons, but it was... <laughs> Eight million names before they went <laughs> out, which is so funny. That part of the whole show. Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the, the story of the genesis of this band that was incredibly prolific. You know, Frankie Valli in the Four Seasons, and uh, you know they're finally kind of getting their comeuppance. But the story is is much more in depth than you would you would imagine. I mean, these guys fought for like you know ten, fifteen years to get on the map. I mean, they were in and out of jail on yeah. a regular basis. You know, they. Um, it's just these working class guys that found this sound together because they didn't have anything else to do mm -hmm. constructively. And, uh, you know, it, it hit, yeah. you know, and the story is gritty and it's like guys like it, you know what I mean? It's like it's like a cross between, you know, VH1 Vine the Music, uh, The Godfather and a rock concert, you know? It so. is, and it's the whole story. Now, you guys know this because you're in a field that's very volatile and it's about living out your dreams and thankfully for all of you it's you know, become a reality, but you sit there and you're like, God, if I had tried it, whatever it is that I, that I felt inside, you know, over and over for that many years, and then how your life would have, you know, taken place. It's, it's that story. It's almost like an everybody story. It's an American thing. dream story, and that's why it's been as successful as it is. Everybody can see themselves in the story. Yeah. That's what makes a successful run of anything. Okay, now, Sean, you're new to the cast. I am new to the and cast. You've only done, you've done two shows, but now you're sick. Yes. Yeah. So, literally, you're yeah. bad. I guess it would be, well, you said 66%. Yeah, we want to know, know if he came with a warrant. <laughs> <laughs> we, we broke him after, like, two shows. So. Where did you come from? Were you in a warm place and then realized it snows no, here? No, or, I'm, I'm an actor. I lived in New York, uh, and now I'm in Chicago. Yeah. Um, and uh, have just been... Very fortunate to be working nonstop for the last six months. It's been great, and uh, I just think I hit a wall. <laughs> <laughs> now, do the rest of you guys get to like audition with new people when they come in, or is it like here they try out for this role, that role, and then you guys are all just kind of put together? They really just throw us yeah. right into the right into the ring together. You know, I, my first show yeah. with. Sean was the first time we'd sung together or acted together. No. Yeah. and Bob, go fellas. Wait, yeah. no, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> oh, really? No, no. There's never any they practice do, ahead of time? Well, they do something called a put-in rehearsal, but right. that's basically for me, uh, for the, the actor going in. Um, Off-stage traffic, on-stage traffic, uh, costume changes. Everybody's in microphone, but I'm the only doofus in a costume. <laughs> 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 oh, that is just too funny. But, um, but no, I mean, um, and uh, understudy rehearsals, um, and uh, and uh, um, other rehearsals where I actually work with the, the swings and uh -huh. and standbys, so oh. it's uh, it's intense. 
Now, Brian, um, you've been, were you with the cast from the beginning? Oh, who, by the way, is from Chicago? Corey? Yeah. Are you from Brian, Chicago? From and Brian, you guys are both from, which is incredibly cool, too, to see. Yeah. But do you, uh, what kind of funny, goofy things behind the scenes, any any uh, stories that you want to share on the Jersey Boys? <laughs> I can't tell this. Yeah. There's some stories I just can't tell. Yeah. Yeah. We want people to actually come and <laughs> yeah. keep up an image here, you know. Give me another one. Give me I could just imagine, because you're going to get these these guys and the whole guy thing, and it's just, like you said, it's, I don't want to say masculine show, because it isn't, but it is the life of these men. Sure. So I can imagine there's just a ton well, of people. I mean, you know, around. unexpected things masculine. happen all the time with live theater. I mean, yeah. you know. From, from, I mean, you know, just as simple as, you know, somebody's microphone is on, they don't know it, and they're maybe warming up backstage. That, I mean, you'll be in the middle of a scene and have that happen, and it's... Or you'll be in the bathroom. Or you'll be Wait, in the bathroom. Wait, did anybody it's, have that? Absolutely. We had, the, we had the, the, the toilet flush from... Oh, you yeah. have oh, yeah. to be kidding. The it, it, happened to happened. The, it happened oh. to one of the women, which made it even better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah. who did this just happen to? Who was Doogie it? Hauser. Oh, oh, yeah. Neil Patrick Harris was just doing a big, um, like, live fan-based <laughs> thing, and he left for a second to go to the bathroom. And they caught him. The mic was still hot, and he was giving himself a pep talk in the bathroom. Oh, and all oh, the fans, oh, I know it's an Oh, that could so happen. All to the me. fans heard the whole thing. It was just oh, thank <laughs> wow. you. that's brutal. Um, what do you guys think is the best? You know, the, your most favorite part of the show for all of you guys? Is there one scene where you're like, "Pow!" You know that this is going to be. I mean, I know there were a couple for me as a as an uh, audience the member. Sit down. Yeah, the sit down. I think. Oh, really? Like when you guys are well, all at the table? Yeah, and yeah, a, our favorite moment is actually the 15 minutes where there is no singing whatsoever. Right. Are you like, <laughs> there, you get a break? Things have things have have um, broken down, and these guys are hashing it out and yeah. finally saying what they want to say, and it's just an explosive scene. And then, Chairs are being thrown across the right, stage. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. the music that comes out of that scene is, oh. is it, what, how that informs the rest of the play yeah. is even better. And Brian has a lot to do with that scene. Brian, you know, yeah. Talk to the people. Well, <laughs> no, I think that you bring up an interesting point. It's just because, um, I mean, we, we first and foremost are a play. Uh, we, don't, we don't, you know, like to classify ourselves necessarily as a musical. Mm -hmm. This is a story about, you know, this band and how they got together. And, you know, uh, with programs that we have, like, behind the music and everything like that, and it seems yeah. like every band has some sort of dramatic you know, deep turmoil. I mean, you know, it, it, it seems to be that's the way that humans are. I mean, you know, yeah. put these guys together for a long time, you know, things get heated and um and and, and that's why I think that the scene is so interesting and, and, and cool for us to do because it, it really is a time for us to get into who these people are and step away from music for a minute. The so. whole time I was watching too, I was wondering how much Frankie Valley had to do with it. Did he know about it? Did he see you know, like what what I mean Frankie Valley and Bob Gaudio both were very like instrumental in making the show a reality. Okay. And and what's great is you talk to like Bob Gaudio and you ask him, you know, as an actor, did that really happen that way? He's right. like, That happened exactly oh, that way. Really? And and you kinda you can't believe it, you know, that yeah. you're reenacting their lives. It must be so difficult for them to watch it. I was gonna well, say, did they come they, they've, they've, they've seen it they've a lot. Seen yeah. And they see they it all over Chicago? the world. It's yeah. also brave for them to let it show warts and all. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, nobody comes out of this unscathed. Right. Well, Bob comes out relatively unscathed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he does, right, He's Bob. the paid producer, but... No, I mean, they really let some of the dark stuff show, which is why anybody cares. It was very yeah. smart. It, it is just... I cannot say enough about this. I'm looking at you guys. I'm actually very reserved. Like, if... If... You... If I talked to you when I was in the audience that night, I would have jumped on the stage and say, honestly, this was like one of the best things I have ever seen. I cannot say enough about Thank it. You so there's much. there's one scene where they actually turn you guys back backward and you're facing like we are part of the audience behind you. I thought it was the most clever scene. I thought it was the coolest just vantage point. And I was like, that was a moment too I realized this is one of the better things I've ever seen. Um, very, very cool. There's a new set of tickets. This is what's really important. If you have not seen Jersey Boys, you absolutely have to go. I'm even thinking my five-year-old could handle the F-bomb like absolutely. eight million times to go see it because it's so worthy. <laughs> I we were five-year-olds. Yeah, yeah, I know, I bet, right? Or younger. Or younger. You know, the mom's or like, younger? listen, you know, oh my, this, my, my kid loves the show. Yeah. You know, to show Frankie what, what, what you can do. And then this little five-year-old cursed at me. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's it's great. It's like the yeah. is okay from zero to five, but not okay from like five to 11, and then okay again from like right, 12 right. to 11. 